Hey, welcome to the show. Today we are going to talk about the upcoming biggest wealth transfer of all time in the history of humanity. What does that mean? How would it affect you? And are there ways that you can benefit from it and take advantage of this opportunity? Hey, welcome to the show. Today we're going to talk about the biggest generational wealth transfer of all time uh, and what that means and most more specifically how you can take advantage of this incredible opportunity. Uh, I first learned about this idea actually a couple of years ago when I first was learning about digital assets and crypto. Uh, and it's kind of surprised me that I hadn't, it hadn't even occurred to me until that point. But we are on the cusp of the baby boomers retiring and passing away, which means that all of the assets that the baby boomer generation owns will be transferred to the next generation, which in this case is mostly going to be millennials. Now, why is this the first time this has happened? Well, if you think about generations of, of people, like broadly, we, we are making absolutely generalizations here. So there's going to be uh, people in the baby boomer group who don't, this doesn't apply to, but but just bear with me for the big picture point here, is that prior to the baby boomer generation, people didn't really own a lot of stuff. Like most people didn't own a lot of stuff. Some people did. There's always been this group of uber wealthy who own the majority of resources, and that's still the case. But after World War II, when we're going to really focus on the United States here, sort of soldiers came back from the war and there was this great rebuilding era. It was very prosperous. This was mostly the 1950s. Uh, for the first time, people started to own their own homes and the suburbs were created. Uh, a lot of new businesses were started and it was a, you know, a lot of people owned cars and televisions and fridges. There was a, a real expansionist era of people for the first time owning assets at a much greater rate. Because if you think back to the the 1800s, you know, families generally lived on farms and then we had the industrial. So not everybody had their own farm. Often families would share those types of things. Uh, and then we began the Industrial Revolution and people moved into cities uh, seeking employment. And in a lot of cases, people lived in rented buildings. You know, this very small group of uber wealthy owned a lot of that real estate and and not everyone, but a large percentage of people lived in places that they did not necessarily own. The majority of the working class were tenants, uh, had jobs in sort of places like factories, you know, as the Industrial Revolution expanded. But then after World War II, there was a big shift. And for the first time, a generation of people had the opportunity to buy real estate, including homes, to buy cars, and this generation also in an in an era of expanded um, employment had extra money that they started to save in things like stocks and bonds and other assets that are designed to store value and this wasn't really a thing before the baby booners now at subsequent generations like the gen x and the millennials are how also have you know, access to those types of wealth saving opportunities. But the thing about the baby boomers is that they're a very large group of people. And I have a couple of sources here, but it's estimated that around 70 to $80 trillion, that's a chunk of change, is going to be transferred from the baby boomer generation to the next group over the next you know, 10, 20 years. And what does this mean for all of us? Well, what do the baby boomers own. Let's take a look at that real quick. All right, there's quite a few sources on this, but let's just look at this one Yahoo article I found from, um, I think this is from this summer, yeah, July of this year. So this is about what do the baby boomers own in terms of assets? So it looks like as a collective group, they have about 20, 75 trillion uh, in wealth spread across mostly stocks, homes, and businesses. And let's just look at some of this, this data here. So it's estimated that they own about $20 trillion worth of stocks. 
And in some cases, those stocks are going to be sold. And in some cases, those stocks will be transferred to the next generation. And compared to Gen X, you know, it, it's double. And millennials only own a fraction of the stocks relative to the baby boomers. Okay, real estate, similar trend. The baby boomers own about $18 trillion worth of real estate. Gen X is actually much closer than the gap we saw in stocks. Pensions, uh, 15 trillion, it's pretty pretty big. And actually what I really wanna focus on in this video um, are the businesses that the baby boomers own. So it is estimated here that baby boomers own about eight trillion dollars worth of business value uh gen x has six trillion so it's not a huge gap but what this means is that there are eight trillion dollars worth of businesses that need to be sold or transferred because at some point the baby boomers are going to be too old to successfully manage those um those businesses All right, let's talk about these businesses that the baby boomers own. So this article is also from this summer, I think. Where's the date year? Not sure. May, I think, of this year. Okay, the baby boomers own two-thirds of the businesses in the United States. So it's estimated that there are 12 million businesses in the U.S., which means that two-thirds of those is 8 million actually they have the wrong here yeah two-thirds of 12 is eight so eight million businesses are going to go through a transition and whether those transition to the next generation where like the child of a boomer takes that business over or i think in more cases you're going to have an instance where that business either closes or gets sold uh, and that is a, a stressful and tricky process for a lot of people um, if you've ever been through it you know that it's probably very emotional and stressful, and there's some unfortunate things that can happen with people who aren't prepared. So if you are uh, interested in selling your business, whether that is now or in the future, um, this is actually something that Val Hill Advisors is helping support clients on, because there's unfortunately quite a few steps that you need to go through to really prepare your business to be sold for the maximum value. And unfortunately, if you've not been through this process before and haven't learned what all those steps are, it's pretty easy to make mistakes and to not have things like the financials kind of reported and audited in a certain way that will make them very uh, attractive to a potential buyer. Uh, so if, you're in, if you are a business owner and interested in learning about the process to sell that, um, I have a link in the description below to just fill out a quick form um, and we'll be in touch to set up a call with you if it's a good fit. But that's not the only way that this wealth will be transferred. So obviously the business sector is huge because there's quite a involved process in selling a business. Uh, but the assets that the um, baby boomers own are, are broader than just that. And this was where actually the digital asset space is really poised to explode. And, you know, we often look at the, the market track trend indicators, the sort of price charts, and see that the last two years have been pretty flat, um, which has been kind of frustrating. I actually think there's been a coordinated uh, effort to manage those markets to keep people believing that you know there's not a whole lot going on there and that it's sort of not a great use of your funds. However, if you think about it, let's even just say that 50 trillion of the 80 trillion is now liquidated in cash and transferred to the millennial generation over the next 10 years. Are millennials likely to buy U.S. Treasuries and bonds? Probably not. What do millennials know more about than the boomer generation did? Well, those are digital assets and cryptocurrencies and, and other types of payment mechanisms that run on the blockchain. Um, it's pretty. It's more likely to be understood by the millennials how embracing technology as part of the next financial system is a pretty smart approach. And so lots of businesses, countries, banks, and whatnot are going to be leveraging this new technology in their businesses, in their governments, global trade, payments across borders. There's a whole bunch of reasons why using digital assets and blockchain-based currencies uh, is a smart play for the, the next financial system. So when you have the 50 trillion, 80 trillion or whatever, it's a lot, <laughs> be moved from the current place that that value is sold, real estate, stocks, businesses, bonds, 
it gets liquidated and now the millennials have to decide where to put it even if they just put half of it into digital assets that would be an influx of like 20 to 30 trillion like last i checked the entire crypto market was about a trillion so it's like massive, massive increase. So if you are in some of these digital assets early, the ones that are expected to have longevity and survive, there's a real amazing opportunity for those assets to become more value valuable simply from a supply and demand dynamics. If you all of a sudden have a lot more buyers and people aren't really selling, the price is going to go up. Uh, and this is why I think the era that we've been in for the last five or so years has felt very early because it is. Like the majority of people aren't sitting around talking about digital assets or crypto other than out of curiosity about what's this Bitcoin thing. But when you get beyond the, the three or four digital assets that have probably gotten the majority of the press coverage and you start to talk about some of those that actually solve real world problems for businesses that aren't getting caught up in the, the media, then you have a real opportunity for incredible increases in value. So let's even just talk about something like XDC or XLM. Those two digital assets don't get a whole lot of press. Like they're certainly not part of the Ethereum like or Bitcoin, you know, public speaking type of route. Obviously there are industry conferences in the digital asset space that attract people to have those conversations. But if you think about sort of the main stage like an MSNBC or a Fox News, uh, are they really talking about how utility assets, digital assets with utility, will become the new, the backbone of global trade, the supply chain, um, how payments work, you know, the, the mechanisms by which money is moved around the globe? Not really. So we're still so early because not a lot of those technologies have been adopted. And we, we, we talk about how tokenization, for example, is going to change things in a dramatic way, but it hasn't really happened yet because, you know, think about the global financial system, like the most giant cruise ship or like a shipping barge, so huge that to steer it and to move it is such a gargantuan effort that it's going to take a long time. But you know what? That means that those of us who are aware of this, aware of this wealth transfer, are going to have ample time to prepare. You can utilize techniques like dollar cost averaging so that you're not stressing about when is the most perfect time to buy. Because for some of these assets like that are so low priced, like let's talk about XLM for a second. It's 10 cents. Uh, <laughs> whether it's 10 cents or 12 cents or even maybe it goes up to 20 cents, that's still extremely low in value relative to what it will likely be once a massive amount of wealth from the boomers to the millennials moves into that market. We start to see adoption, start to see utility. If you've watched any of my videos about XRP and the virtuous cycle, you know that there's a dynamic in play between an asset that has utility for transactions, XRP is a great example, and the corresponding force of wanting to store your value somewhere because you got to store it in something why not store it in something that's going up in value? You start to see this like cyclone effect where these two dynamics actually act and compete with one another. I absolutely believe with conviction that that describes XRP, but it's not the only asset. I think XLM and Stellar have a lot of promise more on the kind of consumer side of things. Uh, I also think that XTC will play a big role in the supply chain and how products are moved around the planet. There still is a dependence on trade finance, which is basically like loans that are taken to fund products being widgets being shipped from A to B. I've made some videos about this before. But this all feeds into this broader picture of we're seeing we're going to see this massive shift in wealth from a generation that is retiring, if not nearing retirement, and unfortunately passing away. That's just sort of the way things work. And that wealth will be moved somewhere else. Now for stocks and bonds, those could literally be transferred, but the millennials have a very different approach on things than their, their parents' generation did. It's always common to sort of look at things differently than an entire generation before you. So it is expected, in my opinion, that we will see a shift from the assets that the boomers have been holding to a new mix, a new portfolio mix. And, you know, we don't really know what's going to happen. I'm not a time traveling psychic, but 
I'm pretty confident that we're going to see a major shift away from some of those, quote, legacy assets towards more technology focused, blockchain focused, we call them crypto, whatever, uh, assets that live on a blockchain that move very, very quickly and inexpensively and will allow uh, some of the financial system inefficiencies to become to come better and improved. Uh, in addition to this, we're also going to see a very large movement from the uh, baby boomer businesses. And that, as I mentioned before, there are 8 million businesses in the United States that are owned by the baby boomer generation that will need to either transition to leadership from the next generation uh, or be sold or be closed. So it'll be unfortunate if a lot of those businesses end up getting closed simply because the owner didn't really know the best way to sell it. That is an unfortunate loss in the value that the business probably has. And you know all that work, in some cases, decades of work has gone into building an impressive business that is you know, paid for everything for, for that owner's family. Uh, and so if you have a prepared system, even like a checklist, where you know all of the things that you need to have organized, that would position you more strategically to sell that business. And by the way, if you're interested in selling the business and you're not a baby boomer, we still would love to help you. Uh, we just know that there's going to be an urgent need on the part of these older baby boomers as they near retirement and need to make some decisions about their business. Uh, so looks like real estate will be affected as there is a transfer. Now, millennials are also real estate owners, so I don't know if we'll see a shift away from real estate, but I would expect that the traditional stock and bond markets will, this is my prediction here, will likely uh, see a remixing towards a greater composition of digital asset and blockchain based um, currencies away from the traditional stuff. So we're still early and we haven't seen all of this wealth transfer happen, which is why if you're kind of anxious that the price of a lot of these assets has not gone up, appreciate the fact that you have more time to buy because of that. And if the price of XRP, for example, had already gone up to $10, you're miss, you would be missing out on the opportunity right now to be able to dollar cost average in some of those. And if you are um, someone who's considering selling a business, a great time to do that is now because you could move that value into another asset that you could uh, buy into again at an early stage and again, see more returns. So for example, let's say you had a business that was valued at $10 million. You sell that ten, sell that business. Now you have ten million dollars in cash. You can use those to make investments in other assets that will likely appreciate considerably in value, and you could turn that ten million into twenty million, or thirty million, or even more. But you kind of get a, a double return. Where if you don't make the steps to sell that business at the maximum value, and you only get five million, and the process isn't really very well managed you're going to lose out on the potential to not only sell it at the best price, but to then quickly convert that value into another asset, like a digital asset or real estate or gold or whatnot. So there's quite a few options that people have. So if you are interested in talking to us about selling your business, I'll put the link uh, to it. It's, it's a jot form. It's like an application for you to fill out so we can get some background and see if it would be a good fit for us to help you. And, um, Got any questions about any of this stuff, please feel free to ask me in the comments and I will see you in the next one.